Hello guys! Welcome to Grooming Zero One. We are Francesco and Sofia from Antipost. We are freelancer groom artists. You can check our latest work in our website antipoststudio.com. Starting from this video, we will talk about you the cool world of grooming in Yeti. We are going to start from scratch and in each video we will talk about some particular feature related with grooming. We begin today with the basics. That means if you love animal like this guy and your knowledge of Yeti is equal to these little friends, you are going to be extremely happy. You are going to learn a lot. So, a brief introduction to grooming and Yeti. I guess you already know what is grooming, but just for random people that are here, we will say that grooming is the specific moment of character development in visual effects where the artists work with guide curves, nodes, layers to create realistic or cartoony fur, hair or feathers. Or grass. Yeah. Never, then, forget, never forget it. The environment grooming. It's important. <laughs> there are different plugins dedicated to grooming. Some of them are in house plugin, used and owned by big visual effects company. Other ones are internally to Maya, like XGen. And then there are external plugins for Maya, like Yeti or Natrix Shave and Aircut. We will focus on Yeti in this series of video, as it is one of the most valid solutions for grooming, and it's the one that we use for our professional and personal works. Yeti is created by Peregrine Labs. They are doing an amazing work with Yeti, creating a grooming plugin that can create high quality results and be efficient in production. Let's quickly check some work created in Yeti. Here we are in the website of Peregrine Labs, the creator of Yeti, and uh, we can see some really nice work and features of Yeti. From other, uh, made by other uh, groom artists? Yes. Here in news we can see some interviews that uh, Peregrine Labs did to studios or uh, individual artists like us, for example, <laughs> we are here. <laughs> and uh, yes, our, the best, latest work made uh, in Yeti come to this page, so check it frequently. They talk also here in these interviews about some tips or the workflow that they use to develop that groom. Always uh, good to take a look on it. Yeah, good advice. So, let's start. For this uh, series of videos, we are going to use this nice troll head. It's uh, going to be a good model to show the first uh, fe features of Yeti, the basic concept. First uh, advice I can give you guys is always to check the model. If the, the topology is fine, if there are any double faces or things that you don't want in your model. And the most important things, if uh, all the faces are in the UV. Because this one can prevent unexpected crashes. Yeti wants all these things. So make sure you do a nice UV. In this case, we don't have so much nice UV, but uh, are going to work fine for this example. Let's talk about uh, elements of Yeti. Yeti node and groom guides. Yeti node or Yeti graph, that is the window that where we are now, is the place where the groom work is going to be built. A bunch of nodes will give directions to your groom, giving you the power to add complexity with a not destructive workflow. Right. In this uh, empty space, we are going to build our groom, adding loads and loads of different nodes. Each one of these nodes will shape in a different way your groom. We are going to see each node one by one in, uh, in this tutorial. And uh, you can create it even from here if you want. If you don't remember the name, here there is all the list of the nodes you can add in this space. Groom Guides is the Yeti word to call the guide curves that are going to drive your hair, giving information of length and flow. Just to show you quickly what is a guide curve, right? Is this. It's just a curve that is going to control all your groom. It's going to be also important for simulation, but that's another story. And uh, we are going to, we are going in details talking about this tool, don't worry, but for now I just want to show you what is a guide curve. This. 
Usually you have just one Yeti node for model, apart from rare cases. Instead, we can have different groom guides set depending the features of the groom. For example, in this wild beast, we groom it for blackbird. Uh, you can see we use a different uh, groom guide set for the body. One just for the short fur in the body. Another one for the long hair in the mane. Another one for the tail. Another one for the bird. And finally, one for the whiskers and lashes. Yeah. And this we, we had these sets of guide curves so we could have more control creating yes, this complex uh, groom. Yes, and shaping them separately from the other one. Now is the moment to create our first setup. Select the geo and in the Yeti tab select create Yeti node on mesh. In this way is directly attached to our mesh. Yes, if you click this one it's not going to be attached. If you click this one, yes, it's going to be attached. So this one, remember to select the mesh, go. So here in the outliner we can see that we already have a Yeti node. For now as a strange name we call it with the, uh, for example, troll doll underscore yeti node so we are never going to forget after this we can create already a groom guide right let's select the mesh yes yeti tab again create groom on mesh this one so here we are our groom as this groom is going to control what the hair we are going to call it hair underscore groom uppercase so we can see it from far away so now we can open the graph from here you see yeti open graph editor we have that window of before that is the window where we put our nodes yes we are going to build our first graph here and we can start to explore this uh, not so big list of nodes from the first one, that is the import node, right? What does the import? Import something. So in this case, is importing by default the geometry, right? So if you click here, you can see there is, wow, our model. So we click select and it's going to be here. So if we create another import node, we now we should we connect the, the, the mesh, now we have to connect the groom, of course, because the groom has to talk in some way with the other nodes here, right? So that's the way we go in groom and boom, there is no nothing. Groom. Where is our groom? Okay, no worries, that's a common mistake you will do a lot of time at the beginning and probably also later. So be, um, before to continue, let's fix this problem. That is not a problem. We just have to select our Yeti node, go in graph, input groom. In the attribute editor. Yes, in the attribute editor. And uh, click add groom and select air groom. You see, it's the one that we have here. We click it and now magically, boom, it's going to show us here. Let's click it. Let's rename the node so we don't get lost. Yeah. Good. So we will just geo as geometry. And here we call it hair groom. Hair groom. Oh yes. After the import node, we are going to create other nodes that are the scatter, the grow, and the comb. These three nodes, you are always going to use them because they are the, the basic, the core nodes of Yeti. So we are going to talk about one by one to meet them better, to know them better. So we are going to link the geo model to the scatter and click this button here to visualize and activate the actual node, right? So as you can see, the scatter is just creating point in all the model. This point then eventually with the grow are going to grow, right? In the scatter we can have the we have the density multiplier that is the number that you want to push if you want more density, right? 
and then we have this slide this check box here lock density what means lock density lock density means that if you click this button right in the render you are going to have the exact number of air that you see in the viewport this one is going to be extremely important when we are going to talk about not advanced topic but basic concept like clamp not worry we are going to cover them later if you don't check this box this number of points or curves later when we are going to grow them is going to be multiplied by 10 right you see this slider by default is 10 we want it 10 right and uh, that's important so for now we don't uh, we don't check it so in the viewport we are not going to have so so many curves right and we are going to go fast but remember this one later we will talk about it because so you it will enter in your head um these other attributes we will focus them later see this just you know to change uh, the dis distribution you know randomly of this generated point grow the grow node let's see what does in the moment we activate it so now it's the scatter after it's the grow boom as you see all this point become curves right a lot of curves As you see, for now, they have all um, the same length, right? And they have the same length because... Uh, we don't have we, any we, guide We curves. don't have any guide curve, thanks. We don't have any guide curve. So we have to link in this second input here, a guide curve, just to start to control the, the length, right? But before this one, as you can see, the, the hair are going everywhere in all the face. The doll that I remember is not so hairy, right? So we have to do something to make grow the hair just in this area, right? And we do just uh, a brief uh, diversion, we can say, to explaining another node, that is the texture node, right? Where we are going to load our texture. In grooming, usually, you need different texture to control where the hair are going to be emitted, but also attributes value, we will see it later. And uh, in this case, we need a density map, right? So a map where it's going to be white, where it's going to be a positive value where we want the hair to grow, and uh, where we want black, where we don't want the hair, right? So we just created this quickly texture here you see simple texture white and black the hair are going to grow from here here there are not going to be any hairs so to plug it we just first how to find the file here in the texture node and we have to find and the first I have to remember where I put this texture not in image source image. In source image groom and density great so it's here in attribute we have to write the um, the default attribute name density this is going to talk with the scatter node when in the moment we connect it so it's going to understand that this texture has to be used for the density and in V coordinates, we have to remember to flip the texture. Flip the texture because uh, Maya read the texture in a different way than Yeti, right? So flipping this texture in the V coordinate is not going to create any problem and the texture are going to work in the way that we want. So just to flip the texture, we have to write 1.0 minus and dollar $t. That is the the value that was there already so 1.0 minus dollar t okay just to tell this stuff now sometimes when you close the graph and then you reopen it and you go here you are not going to find what you wrote here because sometimes uh, 
yet he makes these little jokes. So don't worry about it, just to rewrite them. Funny. So here we write uh, density text. So we know what's inside there. And we connect them. So let's see what happened now. In the moment we connect this one, it has to be here in the middle before the scatter node, okay? Doesn't happen anything. Why? Because probably we have to reopen it again. And you see, ba boom! We just did this connection and yet it didn't load for some reason. So we reopen the graph. We do this connection. And boom, it didn't crash, but a lot of curves points appear in the area that we paint white. And now with the grow, boom, it's going to grow only in that place. So in the grow node, we have different attributes. The most important one uh, are the minimum length and the maximum length, right? Explain you now before to attach the groom because uh, so you see what's what's happening So if you put minimum length, let's say to 0 5 you see there are going to be curves shorter, okay, and the shorter of this curve is going to be Of this value. It's not going to lower. Okay, this one is going to be extremely good when we are going to build like animals fair also hair that uh, you know, an animal doesn't have the, the hair uh, of the same length. So here we, we can just play with that. For now we keep it like this, it's going to work fine. Then after we are going to refine it. The length multiplier we use to keep it at 1, because it's just going to multiply the overall length uh, of the hair. And uh, in, uh, in geometry, yes, it's important to know the segment count. The segment count uh, Practically is uh, the um, how, how much a curve is uh, subdivided, right? So for example, for long hair that have really a long shape, you need to put a longer segment count because you you need more resolution there. For short fair, it's fine the default value. Okay, you are going to see later when we are going to build this group. So. Uh, just to see how to implement the groom, the groom guides in the grow, we are going to select the this one, okay, this groom, and just connect it here in the grow, okay. Nothing is appearing. Why? Because we don't have any curves builded in the in the in the groom. In the groom, yes. <laughs> So, yeah, you see, in the moment we build something, up here something again. But we don't want, you know, these uh, so many curves here. We are going to do a video just talking uh, to talk about this, the groom tool, uh, as so many. And if we start to talk about now, we are going to forget about the graph, the Yeti graph. And uh, it's better to talk about one thing time by time. So don't worry, next video, uh, we are going to talk about this. So for now we just uh, uncheck populate at mesh points so it's not going to create the hair in the in the vertex here you see because if you create this one for each vertex boom it's going to create a curve we don't want not that now we just want few curves so we uncheck this one and we click one boom there is only one I'm going to scale it quickly Okay, like this. You see, in the moment I'm going to scale it, the groom is going to follow it. So, for now, the this groom is giving information of length, right? This one. So, now if, for example, we want to shape this air, and we do like this, right? You see, the air are not following. Why? Because this is the work of the comb, right? For now the comb is not activated and is neither connected with the groom, right? So, 
we in the moment we activate the comb and connect the import of the groom in the comb boom you see it's working so if you shape this one you see you can see you can shape your art style already with just one curve amazing so we have here our first little setup of nodes just to do a quick recap we have the geo node that import the model in the graph a density texture that control the placement of the hair where the hair are going to be emitted the curves the scatter that place points in the area controlled by the texture the grow node that control the length thanks to our groom guide and the comb that comb and give information of direction to our group let's talk about clamp when i first heard the word clamp i really didn't know the meaning mainly because uh, english is not my my language is my, my, my main language as you already noticed so it took uh, took me a while to got the point of clamping but thanks to this couple of image today we will understand quickly what is a clamp so a clamp uh, basically is an attraction of curves of uh, air fair as you can see in this nice polar bear fair so there are, can be different um, sides of clamp like you, you can see here there are this big one there are this even little one and this is what gives variation and realism to a groom even more if you are doing a, um, a realistic fur animal and you have to match the feature of that grooming you know so clamping is one of the most is for me it's the core of grooming so you have to always keep the eyes open for it we can see another image a senior lion here we can see really a, an amazing variety of clamp we have this giant chunk of clamp and inside we have little one even more in this area we can see that they are really outlined they are so stressed like rasta yes kind of rasta rasta clamp in the lion cool hairstyle then of course here there is a lot of scraggle you know all this area you know, like this that the um, they destroy all the clamp you know they open all the clamp but uh, this one are a point that we are going to see later but for now once we understand what is a clamp is just this attraction of air just to see what means clamp in action here in our scene we can create a clamp node that is the node that is going to deal with the clamp right connect it with the comb and uh, let's say we want to clamp all these curves to this single curve right so create the shape that we want you know this triangular shape this air style so to convert uh, this curve in a curve, this guide curve, in a curve that uh, Yeti can read, we have to create a convert node, connect it with the guide curve that you want to convert, in this case this one, and in the second input connect the geometry. After this we can connect the final output with the clamping node. And let's see what happens. Ah, just to remember, by default this turn to fibers. Strands, in this case, in Yeti slang, means uh, the, 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 curve. the guide curve. And fibers practically are the curves that are going to be emitted and rendered by the graph. Okay? The clamping node needs fibers. So for this reason, we, the output has to be fibers. Are already strands, fibers, and they go in the clamping. We can do the exact uh, opposite uh, flow, but in this case we don't need it. So, let's see what happens if we first we activate the groom and now we activate the clamp. Boom! 
that's a super clamp, I would say, no? We can see that all these curves are going to be smashed all together this single curve. Fun, yeah? So with this, uh, we can give a quick view to the clamping node. We can see that, you see, the weight is going to control the overall weight of the clamp. If you put zero, it's going to stay like the comb, you see. By the moment we put up the weight... By weight is like the power of that guide curve. Yes, it's it's the power of the of uh, the of all these attributes, you know. So with the random, we can you know some curves can be more clamped. Another one is going to be less clamped. It's always useful to put a bit of random. Base attraction is to release a bit the the clamp in the base. Okay, as you see, it's working only in the base. And tip attraction is to do the same, but only in the tip. So as you can see, we are already uh, with these four attributes uh, um, um, a lot of uh, a lot of power. We have a lot of way to customize our clamp. Another important attribute of the clamping node is the attraction bias. The attraction bias is going to control how much the base or the tip attraction is going to affect the groom. So I really suggest you to play with this value, as you can sometimes you you can't get when you can't get you know your kind of groom with this value. Always play with start to play with this value, and uh, that is going to give you that extra power you need. It's all for the clamp node for now. We are going to see all the other parameters later, but uh, now we can already start to shape. You see our groom and uh, we can in live modify our curves so you see we, we can already try to customize our of course in this moment we have uh, one guide curve yeah. so all the um, the fibers are f are following that guide curve but in the moment we put another other guide curve we can do Yes, right. Show, show. Just, uh, yes, just, uh, in, in, for example, the moment we are going, if you check this button, then we are going to explain this one in the following video. If we put another, if you put one, another one, you see, we already have another clamp. <laughs> so you can really be creative here. And uh, of course, we are not going to work with just a few curves, as you will see later, because we need to have, you know, power to create. Uh, maybe we can show a quick reference. Yes, it's here. You see, we can uh, create, we need to create this kind of shape, and so we need control, we need more resolution, we say resolution curves to create this air style. With few curves, you can already start to shape and have fun with the model. You can add the other one if you want. Remember to check this conform new strand. That means that in a moment you create a new one with plus. The next video, don't worry again, we're going to focus on this. You just create one and it's going to be quite similar to the one that are already in the model. So yes, we create other one. Here you can start shape with just this two, you know, you create with this one and you comb with this one. This comb here, just can comb them nicely. And if you feel brave, you can go in the clamping node and play with the clamp. You see, you can go here with the traction bias and play a bit with it. Of course, later we are going to have other way to create this clamping curve, right? So for now the clamping curve are this one here. But we're going to have many more, you know, we are going to have different layer of clamps, you know, to create, again, reference, you know, to create these big clamps and then, you know, these kind of little clamps. We're going to work on it later. That's all for now, guys. I hope you enjoyed this first tutorial. 
we are going to talk in the next one about the grooming guides tools that are this one you know that will give you the power to customize your curl in a lot of way with a lot of tools and uh, later we are going to expand our graph you know and finally start to render if you want to support us and practice on the troll doll, you can find in the description of the video a link to our Gumroad page, where you can download the model and the groom texture for these first tutorials.